What is up you guys and welcome back to my channel. I am going to start by apologizing for the ASMR going on like right below me. Rex is chewing on a bone and that's just what we got to let him do in order to get through this video. So if you guys hear a noise that sounds like chewing, it is not your imagination. It is very much Mr. Rex just being Mr. X. So just let me get that out of the way, but welcome back to another try and review and this time for another athlete collab with no other than Katherine Mueller and the No Filter Collection. We are officially transitioning into the pastels, the bright colors, a lot of new pieces, and I am so excited to review this collection for you guys. If you guys have not watched one of my reviews before, hello and welcome. My name is Gabrielle Tongle, but you can call me Gabs, and I am pretty well known for my very in-depth reviews and specifically looking out for my bigger titty committee girlies. But the nice thing is, is that my reviews are helpful for honestly every body, whether you are somewhat like my body type or if you're polar opposite. My reviews have definitely been helpful for just about everybody. So if you guys want the full details on the upcoming Buffany collection, no filter collection in collaboration with Catherine Mueller, then just keep watching. A few housekeeping things before we get into the video, and that is number one. Make sure you pause this video and download the free PDF that is down in the description box. This PDF is what gives so much supporting information to this video, such as additional measurements, photo comparisons, color comparisons, all the good things that I have not included on the screen here is in that PDF. And the reason that we do it that way is that it's been very helpful to follow along with this PDF alongside the video so that it's not like too much information overload coming out of my mouth or paying attention on the screen. It's nice to have the PDF plus the video complement one another. So I highly, highly recommend that you guys pause this video, download the free PDF down in the description and then follow along. This PDF is quite hefty. She is usually over 150 pages, but for a very good reason. So please, please, please make sure to download that PDF so you guys don't miss out on any other important information that could be complimentary to what I'm saying in this video. If after this video you guys have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me over on Instagram. Send me a DM. I love to send voice memos, love to send additional photos, whatever you guys need in order to feel supported in shopping this collection. I am there for you guys. And of course, if you guys want to save 10% off your order, you can do so by using the code Gabs at checkout. You absolutely don't have to, but it is a way to show the company like, hey, let's keep Gabs around. And just a way to support me if I was able to help you in any sort of way in shopping for this collection, whether that's through this video, whether that's on Instagram, whether that's the PDF, whatever it might be, it's just a way to show support for the Gab fam, for everything that we do for these try on reviews. In addition, I do have a Discord community and this is where I do save additional photos, comments, answer you guys on last minute questions. This is usually one of the easiest ways to get a hold of me in conjunction to Instagram DMs. So I highly recommend that you guys join my free Discord community if you guys want more one-on-one -on -one time to chat all things No Filter Collection. Lastly, the Libra Sisters and I will be doing a live Q&A on Thursday at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So if you guys want a live Q&A session with the three girlies that definitely do one of the best reviews for Buffany Collection collections, then you guys can tune in over there. And without further ado, let's get right into this video. All right, so you guys said it in the last few collections that you guys are done with the nudes, the muted colors, and we want the brights. And let me tell you, this no filter collection is definitely delivering on the bright spring colors. Immediately when I saw the color palette, all I could think of is that TikTok where it's like the pastels. Like she was like, this is what I asked for, like with her nails or whatever. And it's like the pastels. That's literally all I could think of because we have so many pastels coming out in this collection. And for the Swifties, you guys will probably understand the Taylor Swift references more than I do. I'm not a Swiftie, unfortunately, so I don't quite know all of the references, but I believe that there are a few Taylor Swift moments in here. Of course, due to Catherine's love to Taylor Swift, so I'm sure a lot of you guys will appreciate that more than I can. But definitely excited to see a new color palette, especially because the last few collections have been very similar ones to one another and very much, again, on the muted kind of side and very much in the nudes and neutrals. Not only do we have a lot of pastels, but we have a lot of new pieces as well, which sometimes we do get a treat in that in some collections where we see a lot of new pieces. So not so much a lot of returning pieces, but a lot of brand new pieces. 
Now, with that being said, I will say there is a lot to navigate with the new pieces in giving you guys my opinion on sizing, what I think, what it compares to. So definitely be ready for that as you get into the pieces coming up here. There's a lot of pieces that are similar, but very slight modifications to make it better or to make it different. So let's first start with the bottoms and we're gonna start with one of the things that I was the most excited about and that is the Micro Legacy Leggings. So the Micro Legacy Leggings is definitely a cousin to what we know is the Legacy Leggings. Now you guys know that the Legacy Leggings are my all time favorite leggings. So the fact that we're seeing an alternative version is definitely something that I'm just, I'm not sure about because the Legacy Legging just has such a high standard. Now, the biggest difference that you guys will find is that the butterfly seam in the back is actually a little bit closer together, so a little bit more bunched together than it is spaced out like the Legacy. And then in addition to that, we also have no side seams. So the Legacy Leggings have the side seams going down literally the sides of the leggings where the Micro Legacy Leggings do not. I do appreciate the new take on the butterfly seams, but I will have to say that the Legacy Leggings remain to be my favorite one between the two. I do think that the micro butterfly seams is a little bit more complimentary to the glutes. However, overall, the legging itself, I do feel fits a little bit looser than what we are used to with the legacy leggings. Now, some people will enjoy this and some people won't. I think it really just depends on your body type, more specifically in your hips. I do find that those who are enjoying the micro legacy leggings the most are those who might have wider hips, where those like myself who have not so many hips and very narrow hips, we are finding that it's just a little bit loose and a little bit baggier there. Now it's not like baggy where it's like baggy baggy in the leggings, but it's definitely not the same support that you would get from the Legacy Leggings. So if the fit of the Legacy Leggings and the compression that you get in the Legacy Leggings is something that you enjoy a lot, just know that it will be very different in the Micro Legacy. The way that I see the Micro Legacy is basically like the Rosa Legging and the Legacy Legging having a baby together. And so as you guys might know, the Rosa leggings do not have any side seams and those leggings do tend to fit a little bit less compressive than the Legacy. So with the Micro Legacy leggings, they basically took the body of the Rosa but then put the waistband of the Legacy with just a little bit of a different butterfly seam in the back. And so that is why I say that they are a perfect marriage of the two leggings. So if you guys liked bits and pieces of the Legacy and the Rosa, they did combine those and basically made you that legging. Again, for me personally, I prefer the way that the Legacy fits, whether that's the OG or the recently updated ones. I do like the overall compression that I get in those in the hips and just overall. And it's a big difference that you guys will find between the Micro and the Legacy legging is that the Micro is actually a little bit less of an ultra high rise and more of a high rise. I've talked about this before in multiple Buff Bunny collection reviews, but I still haven't quite figured out my preferred rise in the leggings. I find that it's very inconsistent for me in liking the high rise versus not liking the high rise versus liking the ultra versus all the things in between. I just find that every legging is just so different. And I truly think that these rises depend on your body type and the legging itself. But nonetheless, I still like to let you guys know what Buffany Collection has classified certain leggings as when it comes to the rise since we introduced the different categorization. So overall, I think the Micro Legacy leggings are a great alternative to the Legacy and Rosa. Again, I think it's a perfect marriage of the two, but personally for me, based on what I liked the most, of the Legacy Leggings, I still love the Legacy Leggings more, and so that is just my personal preference. The Micro Legacy Leggings will be coming out in a new Lavender Haze, Enchanted Teal, and Onyx Black. I personally like still wearing the size small and found that it was perfect. The Micro Legacy Leggings also continue to be made of the Nubri fabric that we all know and love, and you can definitely feel how nice and soft they are straight out of the package as always. Next up, we have the Contour Pocket Leggings. So if you guys love the flare leggings, but also love your pockets. The contour pocket flare leggings are going to be your guys' new favorite. I will also say I do enjoy the contour pocket legging because I do find that with the pockets, it does give a little bit more support and a little bit more hug in the hips and in the waistband, given that it does have that extra bit of material for the pockets. And so I did really, really enjoy these contour pocket leggings. I did find that they did flare out just a little bit more than our usual foxy flares. And so if that's gonna bother you, just keep a heads up, but it didn't bother me at all, but it is something that I did notice. Again, in the PDF, you will see a few different comparison photos comparing all the different flares that we've seen, including the boot cut as well that we recently saw in a previous collection. So if you guys wanna see all the differences in the flare-ness of the leggings, 
leggings, then you guys can check that out in the PDF. The Contour Pocket leggings will only be coming out in two colors. We have it in Onyx Black and Cold Brew. And again, it is very much mimicking the Contour Pocket legging and shorts that we've seen in a previous collection, but this time we see it in a flare style. And the pockets are just as amazing as the pockets always are with Buffany Collection where they can fit an iPhone Pro Max. So if you have a large phone, no worries there. And like I said, the pocket does seem to give just a little bit more compression on the sides, which hugs you in just a little bit more and gives you a little bit more shape. And so I did enjoy that quite a bit. I truly feel like Buffany Collection is really nailing the flare category with their leggings. I mean, I did have some thoughts around the boot cut, but I do feel like the flare alone, they have nailed it so well. And again, these contour flare pocket leggings are definitely one of my new favorite flares and I'm not even that much of a pocket girly but something about the extra hug that I get from this legging is something that I'm enjoying quite a bit. As always with the flares I do always stick to a regular although I love that they introduced a short inseam I do find that the regulars work the best when you are wearing it out with some shoes especially if your shoes have a little bit of platform to them. Sometimes I'll go short sometimes I'll go regular but for the most part I have been gravitating more towards the regular just that I don't feel limited to what shoes I can wear with the pants. I will say when I'm at home wearing the pants they do drag along the floor in the regular but again because I know that I'm going to wear a lot of these out with some shoes on especially because I'm a platform girly I do go ahead with the regular just to be safe so I don't have to worry about getting them hemmed or anything like that all the contour pocket leggings will be coming out in the three inseams that we have been seeing recently in a lot of the leggings and that is short regular and tall I also feel that the contour pocket leggings have a really nice glute contouring happening in the back as well again very much exactly what we've seen in the contour pocket leggings and contour pocket shorts they just did a really great job at contouring in general these I found were a perfect rise on me and these are classified as a high rise legging candid cross waist leggings I know you guys love your crossway situation, but till this day, your girl still not cannot get behind it. It just continues to not be a legging for my body, given how I carry my body fat. And just no matter what they do, they all seem to do the same thing to me, which is roll like crazy. And I just, I get the cute waistband cross situation snatching the waist in when I'm feeling my best in the day like early on in the day and when I'm just standing but once I start going about my day and just like bending over sitting down walking around that waistband just continues to love to roll down no matter what and again I feel like this is more of a my body type problem than it is of the legging because I know a lot of other people don't have this issue and again it's just going to come down to where you carry a lot of your body fat and the body type that you have and that is okay. However, I will say that these candid ones do sit a little bit better in a sense that they're not too high so that the rolling doesn't happen as fast. I found that the rolling happened as I was sitting down a little bit more, as I was slouching a little bit. So it took a little bit more time to get to that rolling stage, I guess you could say, which is a bit, little bit of a win. I do also find that they changed the pattern of the fold over, like in the Siren and some of the other crossover waistbands that we've seen previously, it crossed over one way and I find that they did the opposite. And the these ones specifically also have a hidden scrunch. Now a hidden scrunch is something that we've been seeing a lot lately with Buffany Collection and there is just a specific science to this scrunch that I feel like is such a challenge to find the perfect happy medium and so kudos to the design team because I can only imagine how much back and forth it requires to perfect the scrunch, especially if you're trying to hide it as well. Like That's just adding another challenge in itself. But unfortunately I find that I believe it's because of the scrunch that my camel toe is just so bad in these leggings. And again, that could be my own anatomy problem, but I do find that a hidden scrunch does tend to do that often with the leggings that we've been seeing recently with a hidden scrunch. And so I don't know if it's something about where the elastic is for the hidden scrunch and how it aligns with the gusset or what that science or math is like, but I did find that I did get quite the camel toe in these leggings. And so these leggings are definitely something that you will have to wear underwear with, or if you're lucky enough and you don't get the camel toe, good for you. But for me, 
I found that immediately as I was trying to scrunch up the scrunch up the booty a little bit more, the camel toe just got stronger and stronger. And so that is just something to be aware of with these leggings if you guys do choose to purchase these. I will say that the booty looked great with the scrunch situation and I loved the hidden scrunch. I think it's so nice that they are able to mimic the scrunch effect without having a very aggressive scrunch happening on the outside visible to everybody else and that it is in fact hidden. But like I said, there is something that needs to be configured a little bit more so that we aren't getting that camel toe, especially because in these canid cross leggings, there are gonna be a lot of those lighter colors that are we're seeing in this new color palette. And so it just sucks that you have to be a little self-conscious about that, given that it is a lighter color and then given that it is doing what it's doing due to, I'm assuming, like I said, the scrunch situation. Because I definitely don't find I get as much of a camel toe when yeah. I was trying on, say, like the siren leggings or anything like that. And I found it very much obvious that the scrunch is what was enabling this camel toe situation happening. Now, I will say as well, the butter fabric that the Canid Cross waistband legging are made of, butter in general is a lot thinner of a fabric than Nubri is. And so I do find that all of the butter bottoms that we've been seeing recently have been a little bit more camel toe prone because I think it's just a lot more of a daintier fabric. So not only did you just add the scrunch situation, but you're also adding that it is a thinner fabric that the legging itself is made out of. So I do feel like the combination of all of that is what is causing the camel toe in these leggings. Again, everyone's anatomy is different, so not everyone might get this. Some might not have this problem. Some might be used to wearing underwear with their leggings, so they're like, it's literally never a problem. But I just wanted to be very honest with you guys that this is something that I'm experiencing, being someone who does not prefer to wear underwear with their leggings often. So this is a case where these leggings, I will have to go ahead with my underwear of choice so that I can comfortably scrunch the booty, but also not have to worry about a camel toe situation, especially especially in this beautiful lover pink color. Shape Seamless. We are going at it again with another new Seamless. And unfortunately, these are not making PR in time for me filming this. So I am hoping that I can get it in time so I can add my thoughts on the screen or update you guys over on Instagram. So I don't have a whole lot to say. However, Teresa was able to go to the boutique and grab herself a pair. And based on her notes, these are all the things that she was saying about the Shape Seamless in comparison to the BBL. Overall, she does prefer the Shape Seamless over the BBL. She still gets a little bit of camel toe, but not nearly as much as the BBL Seamless. So it's definitely a win in the right direction when it comes to Seamless. Again, very similar to the whole scrunch situation. I feel like Seamless is another one that's really hard to perfect, but I do love that we're seeing an improvement every single time a new piece is coming out. It sounds like this Shape Seamless might be the best Seamless that we have seen to date, given that there is some consistency in compression between the waistband and the legs the rise, the booty scrunch, everything like that. And so I cannot wait to get my hands on this myself so I can truly understand the difference between the BBL Seamless and the Shape Seamless. Something very different to note about the Shape Seamless is that the glute contouring is slightly different. So before with all the Seamless, you're usually seeing a under glute contour where with this one, we have a little bit of a contour happening on just the upper glutes coming down on the hips. And this is also still very, very complementary to the glute shape. And so I am so... So excited to try these, but again, I unfortunately do not have them right now to give you guys my honest review. Personally for me, I will be going ahead with a size small based on the recommendations that I have been seeing in knowing that the seamless is just a little bit less compressive than the BBL Seamless, which means hopefully the size small will be working out just fine for me. Next up is the Rosa Jacquard. So if you guys are not familiar with the Jacquard fabric. Buff Buddy Collection has done this quite a few times since some of the OG days, and that is a knit jacquard situation. And basically what that means is that the pattern is woven in that way versus printed on. And so it is a very unique material that it's made of. And I do find that this material is usually a little bit thicker than the other fabrics that we see in all of the other pieces. We have seen one different one in the confidential sets a long time ago 
in the Off the Grid collection, as well as the Boss collection, which is like literally forever ago. And that I feel is like its own jacquard. And a lot of people are waiting for that kind of jacquard to come back. But unfortunately, the jacquard that you guys are going to be expecting in this collection is definitely a lot more similar to the one that we've seen in the Rebel collection. And as well as that very, very old like Chevron white and black one that we've seen in the past. So again, a little bit on the thicker side. It is still stretchy, but it's not nearly as flat and more on the seamless side as that confidential jacquard is. So for those who do have that jacquard, I just want to confirm that it's not the same as that one. And again, it's more on the thicker version like we've seen in the Rebel collection. Now the jacquard is supposed to mimic the famous bossy print that everybody knows and loves so much, but personally for me, I actually don't see a lot of a similarity in it looking like the bossy print. I actually find that it's definitely more on like reminding me of that like Terra, I think it was like Terra Kaza or something like that. I can't remember exactly the name, but it was the one that we saw in the Sugar Rush collection where it kind of looked like it was like like broken stones or something like that and like a lot of just like little reflex and so that's what the jacquard bossy print is reminding me personally especially when you look at it up close and even from afar I don't quite see those like more strawberry like polka dot situations that the bossy print is known for and so that's just my personal take on it the jacquard itself is definitely it's just not my favorite. You know what I mean? Like I, th those, some people will love it. Some people won't. And I just find that even though it is stretchy, there is still some restriction to it. And my personal favorite jacquard is that confidential one that is more like the camo that we've seen in the past. I just find that that is just a lot more comfortable of a jacquard style. And so it's not my number one fabric that I would choose. But again, if you guys like the uniqueness of the jacquard fabric and the way that the prints are woven the way that they are, then it's definitely a great time to grab a piece like that because we definitely don't see jacquard very often in collections. And I do, again, I always appreciate Buffany Collection trying new things and continuously trying to revisit things that we've done in the past, but in a different way. And so that is what you guys can expect with the jacquard in general. As far as the Rosa jacquard, it's going to be exactly as described. It's going to be like the Rosa legging with no side seams, no additional different seams on the back or anything anything like that, except it will be made of the jacquard fabric. Based on the Catalina bra that I have, I will say that this jacquard reminds me a lot of the, I believe it was the nuclear one in Rebel where it is definitely stretchy. Um, I think it's hard for me to say because I don't have the leggings and leggings versus the bra could, can be very different. But from what I can see from the bra, I do feel like it is going to be the, you know, decently forgiving stretchy jacquard it's just again for like the 10th time not the same as the confidential jacquard i just want to make sure that it is so crystal clear that it is not that kind of jacquard it is more the nuclear one that we have seen in the rebel collection so it still gives you that stretch that you're looking for in active wear however it is more on the thicker side so i wouldn't say it's the most breathable one out of the bunch of materials that we'll be seeing in this collection so it's just something to keep in mind also, because they are a Rosa style legging, they are going to be ultra high rise. So again, keep that in mind if the rises is something that you have been paying attention to and you do have a personal preference in one or the other. That is everything on the leggings. And then we actually only have one pair of newbie shorts coming out in this collection. And that is, of course, a micro legacy short. You can't just do a micro legacy legging without a short. And the micro legacy short, I can only assume is going to be very identical to the micro legacy legging. So a lot of the similar things that I've already mentioned where it's going to mimic more of a Rosa body with just a legacy waistband. So just keep that in mind when it comes to your sizing. I know personally for me, for the Rosa shorts, I normally go with my regular size of a small regardless of the inseam length, just because we do have a little bit more of forgiveness in the hips. So something for you guys to just think about if you guys are choosing either of the micro legacy bottoms. The micro legacy shorts will be coming out in onyx black, lover pink, and lavender haze. It was going to come out in this afterglow yellow that I'm wearing here, but the shorts did get pulled due to sheerness so you will unfortunately not be seeing the shorts available for sale the shorts are also a six inch inseam so for my girlies who live the six inches that is what you guys can expect from the micro legacy shorts next up we are going into the sports bras and we are going to start with the one that i'm wearing here so as you guys might recognize we have a little bit of a candy wrap happening at the bottom but obviously we have a crew cut where it comes 
fairly high neck, but then we also have some of the adjustable features that we have seen in the candy wrap bra. So I do love the spin on this. It's very much giving me Aurora crop top vibes with the wrap situation detailing at the bottom, as well as the adjustability in the candy wrap that we do love and appreciate very much. As I've said many, many times in all of my reviews, I appreciate the adjustability wherever and whenever we can, because I just think it is a perfect way to accommodate all of the different body types out there and where you need more tightness or looseness, especially in a bra. Our busts are so unique to size. And so with sports bras, the more adjustability, the better. And so I do love that we're seeing more and more adjustable features. Now, when it comes to this bra specifically, I do find that I don't feel it's as flattering as the candy wrap bra. And I'm not sure if it's like because of this line going down in the crew neck here. I normally love the high neck situation. You guys know I am a whore for my Aurora crop tops. And so I was very excited about this one initially because of that. Um, however, I feel like something about, I think I want to say it is this middle line here is throwing me off a little bit to not feel as cute and like feeling like not preppy, but it's just, it's not as as cute. Like that's the best way that I could describe it. I do find that we do have quite a bit of upper boob, side boob happening here. I am wearing a large right now in this afterglow yellow, but I just find that it is spilling out just a little bit. It is something that is expected with this kind of a cut of a bra, so I'm not surprised by any means. So it is something to expect in a bra, tank top, whatever you want to classify this as on you. But I do love the wrap detailing. I always find that it is very, very flattering, and I think it does overall look like a great top. I think it just is going to depend on your personal preference, but even when it's paired with a legging, I just don't feel as cute. So if you are someone who likes the higher coverage and just not a lot of clavage happening, then this bra is definitely going to be a top pick for you. Overall, I would say she is a great pick for the bigger titty committee in general for, again, many reasons that I just mentioned already. The fact that you get a lot more surface area coverage because it is high neck. The fact that we do have the adjustability in the straps here to give us just a little bit more support. You are getting that nice combination of support and coverage with this bra specifically. We do not have a elastic or any other extra reinforcement underneath. We do just have a bottom seam just to kind of lock things in. I will say that I do feel quite supported in this when you do get the correct sizing. Had I gotten like an extra large, I definitely would feel like it gets a little bit too loose, but I find the large is absolutely perfect in regards to giving me the right amount of support and coverage to deem this as a media support bra. This wouldn't be my first one to be running in or anything like that, just because I do like that extra bit of reinforcement at the bottom with an elastic band usually, but I will say she is a pretty good pick for the Bigger Titty Committee. Again, just something to keep in mind is that naturally, just given the design of this, you will get a little bit of that upper boob, that side boob spillage, and that's just what you have to expect with a designed item like this, and so for me, I fully knew that, I was fully ready for that, and that is why I am okay with it. And so just again, something that I wanna to mention to you guys, something that I do appreciate a lot is I love all the silicone branding in all of the pieces in this collection. I found that they're almost everything I believe has the silicone Buff Bunny logo, and I love that so much. I think it just really elevates the pieces and makes them just look that much more luxe. So I really do hope that we continue to see more and more silicone logo placements. I do also love the different metal that they used on this. I don't know if it's different or if it's just that it's dyed to be tone on tone that I do appreciate it a lot, that it just kind of blends in so seamlessly with the pieces, but you will notice that the metal is the exact same color as the bra itself, which I do love. Now, remember that this, the adjustability is only in the straps going this way, not going across the back like that. However, I do find that the adjustability is great amount of adjustability where just a few moments ago, I felt like this was just a little bit too tight on my traps, but once I loosened it, I feel a lot better and we still have that very, very stretchy elastic that we have seen from the candy wrap bras from th since day one. I feel like this is the best elastic to have 
in a lot of the thicker strap bras because it's just the most comfortable. I'm definitely not a big fan of the ribbon one or the thinner one. This is definitely my number one pick. And so overall, I would say comfortability wise, this bra is really good. However, I do say that she does give just a little bit more support than the candy wrap for obvious reasons, being that it is a higher neck bra. So I do love this cousin version to the candy wrap bra. So I think it was a great addition to the candy wrap line. So really good job, Catherine and the design team on bringing this to life. Of course, I do love that she is a longer line. I always love my longer line bras. I feel like we have been waiting a minute for more long line options. So I am happy to say that we do see a few options of that in this collection. So if you guys have been waiting for more long line bras and you want something new, but maybe a little bit similar to ones that we love, then I would definitely say that the Candy Wrap Crew would be a great addition to your wardrobe. I do find that this color is totally fine in wearing it without the boot pads. I did take mine out from this one just because it wasn't looking quite right with this design and so I did take them out and definitely you cannot see no areolas or anything like that so you are good to go. So if you guys are worried about this after glow yellow being a little bit sheer in the bras, you have nothing to worry about. Again, this color is removed from bottom so we're not gonna have to worry about that in this collection. And so overall, those are my thoughts on the Candy Wrap Crew. I do also have a medium that I'm trying on here. However, I do find that it is giving me just a little bit too much spillage and I am having to loosen the straps all the way in order for it to be very comfortable in the trap area. I will say I've been having my own personal issues with my traps lately just due to poor posture sitting at the desk and just overall my posture has just been absolute shit. So I have been having a lot more tenderness to my traps lately so anything has been making it feel uncomfortable there so I did find that I had to loosen it all the way with the medium and so while it did give me a little bit more locked loadedness and it did give me a little less extra wrap fabric and a little bit shorter I did find that the large was the most comfortable for me and so again I think it really just depends on your personal preference and what you're looking for if you are someone like myself who can do both a medium and a large. I just always, like I've said before to you guys, I have to pick and choose based on what is most important to me in that, those specific bras. Next up is our regular tried and true candy wrap bra. We have seen her many, many times. So I don't have a whole lot of new things to say since there are no changes to the candy wrap bra. It will be coming out in all these beautiful colors and she is just again, the candy wrap bra that we all know and love. So if you guys have been wanting to add more colors to the candy wrap bra, you guys can definitely do so in this collection. Add some pastels in there. Now the biggest differences between the candy wrap crew and the candy wrap bra is that I find that the bra has the metals that aren't like the tone on tone. So not sure why they did that, but I did notice that the pink one that I have has the gold metal versus how this one had the yellow metal. I wish they did change that in the candy wrap bra itself because like I said, I think it just looks a lot nicer. And then this is where you'll see a lot of the bigger differences in the back of the two tops is that the candy wrap crew just has a regular kind of like wide you know band happening across the back where the candy wrap has the usual elastic so just giving a little bit more give in the back there so those are the main differences honestly at first i thought that the candy wrap crew had like hooks that you could remove so that you could do like crisscross or non crisscross and i got so excited but that's not the case it just looks that way because of the metal clasps that are at the bottom but yeah that is going to be the biggest things that you're going to notice between the candy wrap and the candy wrap crew, other than obviously the, the crew being a crew, is that the metals are different and then the way that it goes across the back is a little bit different as well, but they both do crisscross like that in the back. It's just the band literally across the back is just different. So basically, if you're looking for a little bit more of a clavage moment, then the candy wrap bra will be for you. If you're looking for a little bit more coverage, then the crew will be for you. All right, diving into the twisted bras. I am so glad that they are just doing more options of things that have been such a great winner in previous collections, but modifying it to accommodate the bigger titty committee. Like, thank you so, so much, Buff Bunny team, because as a BTC president, almost I would say, I very much appreciate the alternative options so that we too, as the bigger titty committee, can appreciate the very fun designs that are a little bit more risque, but like we don't feel like we're too risque, you know what I mean? And this twisted bra is a perfect example of that. So initially when we saw the twisted bra back in the Naked collection, there was just no way that was going to be something that could be okay for me to wear in public 
without feeling like my boobs were just fully out there. That was a bra that I'd be wearing under a sweater, at home, chilling, whatever that might be, and very much for my eyes and anyone around me that I'm comfortable with only, but definitely not for the public. It was a very clavage moment, but she looked so good for the itty bitty titty committee. And so that was a bra that just did not work for me for many, many reasons. And so when I saw that we had another version of this being the twisted curve version with molded cups, oh, my heart was just so, so happy. So no, she's not a bigger titty committee bra, meaning like, you know, fully meant to, you know, lock us in, support us, cover us, whatever that may be. But she definitely does have certain features that allows the bigger titty committee to feel comfortable and somewhat supported in a specific design. And so I think this is a huge, huge stride in the right direction for the bigger titty committee. And I just appreciate it so, so much. You guys have no idea. Like it just makes my heart so happy for the bigger titty community. So just a moment to say thank you. So let's get into the twisted curve bra first because this is a new style that we have not seen before being that it has molded cups. Molded cups is something that I look for a lot in sports bras, in regular bras, because I just find that it's a great way to add some nice support for the girls without it being too much padding or anything like that. And so I will say molded cups aren't a preference for everybody in the bigger titty community because I think it definitely depends on the fullness of your cup. So you could be bigger titty committee, but you might have more of the cup fullness happening at the bottom versus at the top. And so some people find that with molded cups, they get a little bit of gapping if they don't have a lot of upper pole fullness is what that's called. So molded cups are definitely not for everybody. However, for the most part, I find that the bigger titty committee can definitely appreciate it because it just gives again that extra support that's not quite your traditional padding basically is the twisted bra with the molded cups added and then with a much more covered back which was another complaint that I had about the twisted bra so again they really tackled some great things in adding in this twisted curve bra alternative the closed back also does give a little bit more support and coverage in the armholes which I think is great and just overall I feel like she just gives a bit more support to the bra just structurally as well and I just think that she makes you feel a little bit more comfortable and covered up given how much is going on in the front and especially because it is a shorter line bra so the twisted curve bra if you cannot tell already is definitely one of my favorites now when it comes to sizing I definitely thought that large was going to be perfect however I find that the large I'm still getting a little bit of under boob a little bit of boob spillage but not nearly as much as the original twisted bra that we saw a long time ago, as well as in the recent collections where we've seen some updates. Just overall, this style, I feel, is just like a more conservative version of the twisted bra, which again, I just appreciate and think allows us to have an opportunity to have a twisted clavage moment, you know what I mean? And so I am hopefully going to get an extra large before the launch happens. If not, I will be ordering an extra large myself because I feel like that will just give me a little bit more to work with so that I don't have as much little bit of under boob and spillage happening just ever so slightly. It's again, not nearly as much as the twisted bra, but you could definitely see it in certain angles that there's a little bit of side boob happening, a little bit of spillage happening, but I don't feel as self-conscious about it, I guess, and I'm very much like just feel a lot more comfortable in general with the style itself. Very excited to hear what everyone thinks about the molded cups, especially because this is the very first time that molded cups are being introduced to Buff Bunny Collection. Again, I am a huge, huge fan of it, but very curious to hear what you guys think of it as well. And I just really hope that we are going to see more like I said, versions of bras that are definitely more itty bitty titty committee, but a version of it for the bigger titty committee as well. And again, I definitely appreciate a little bit more back coverage given just how much is going on in the front. And overall, I just do love this bra so, so freaking much. I do hope that we see more colors because this one is only coming out in black, cold brew, as well as enchanted teal. Now, of course, for those who did love the twisted bra that is going to be included in this collection as well, it is going to fit very similar to the most updated version that we've seen where they did fix the strap security a little bit so you won't find it falling down nearly as much. I feel like I still would. I didn't get an updated version just because I knew that that bra was just not for my cup size. And so I can't speak on that. But from what I have heard, there has been a slight adjustment in it and it has 
helped a little bit as well. So if overall you did enjoy that style or you've, you've been wanting to try it just in a new color, then you guys can definitely do that in this round. But other than that, there are no changes to the twisted bra. These do not have the molded cups. These just still have the traditional removable bust pads, which we're all used to. Next up is the Buttercup Sports Bra. This one definitely surprised me that I actually did not mind her. Of course, she is a shorter line bra. She is a little bit smaller, but I actually enjoyed her a lot. I definitely see her as being a version of the Bloom Bra, just a little bit smaller. So perhaps for the Itty Bitty Titty Committee, I know that the Bloom Bra hasn't been your guys' favorite due to it just being very high coverage. I know the Bigger Titty Committee definitely enjoys the Bloom Bra, but this Buttercup one I find is like a smaller version of it because we do have the ruching happening in the front, but it is again a shorter line bra and it does have the spaghetti strap, so not nearly as covered up as the bloom but it's definitely some similar features again i was very surprised that i actually enjoyed this buttercup bra i didn't find she was as small as i anticipated her to be and i did find her quite comfortable as well and a decent amount of coverage too i think something about the design that they did on the buttercup that it's not quite like a tube top with like spaghetti straps they definitely like accentuated to keep that shape on the side here to give us that bit of a side move coverage is why i do enjoy the buttercup bra and feel that i'm not super clavage but i do still get obviously a lot more but i don't feel like i'm too out there that i wouldn't be comfortable you know filming stories wearing it or anything like that she does have a little bit of a sweetheart neckline situation as i just described so we do love that a little bit as you guys know i'm not the biggest fan of the spaghetti straps only because i feel like that sometimes they're not comfortable but i didn't have any issues wearing this buttercup bra for an extended period of time so i will say that these are one of the few that i do approve being a spaghetti strap and shorter line bra i love the little crisscross detailing in the back as well i think that's super fun and of course i love that she is made of the butter fabric you know that butter fabric is just so literally buttery as much as she is a pain in the ass for the bottoms when it comes to the camisole situation you cannot argue that that butter on the skin feels so, so nice. And so, again, another one of those bras that are going to be very comfortable to wear for an extended period of time. And something nice to wear when you're not really feeling the longer line bras. Personally, for me, you guys know that the shorter line bras are still something that I'm very not sure if I could ever wear like at the gym unless I was feeling myself like 150%. I just feel like it's a lot going on, especially being a bigger bust. But like I said, I do feel like the buttercup isn't the worst that we've seen in being a shorter line bra for the bigger titty committee. Last note to make is that the buttercup bra does have a little bit of an inverted V hemline happening at the bottom. So she doesn't go straight across at the bottom. She just curves in just ever so slightly at the bottom there. So you'll notice that it just kind of like is like a sweetheart neckline that kind of like goes like that. You know what I mean? And we'll actually see that in the next bra that I want to talk about, which is the halter seamless bra. A lot of thoughts around the halter seamless bra, especially because I'm sure a lot of us are comparing it to the one that we saw in the Sevens collection that I definitely had a lot of things to say about. This one I will say we have some improvements. So the halter seamless bra is definitely going to be the one that you're going to pair with the shape seamless leggings. And it does have the ability to remove that center line or to keep it on to kind of help reduce the tension on the neck there, which I think is such a brilliant idea in adding to halters. And so I do love that it's something that you can add on or you can remove and it is adjustable as well. The halter seamless bra is definitely something that is in between being a short line and a long line. I feel like for me, she's more on the short line only because she is a smaller bra in general, like doesn't have a whole lot of like thickness in the band or anything like that. Now, the issues that I had with the halter is just that I found that the cups looked almost a little bit too small. Like I feel like we should have added just a little bit more height to them. It just looked a little off on my cup size. I don't know how much better to describe it than I felt like it just looked a little bit too small of like cup coverage given that it was a size extra large. And so I feel like I wish we could have just gotten a little bit more. There's also these two little folds in the front that I'm not really sure why it was like that, but I did find them a little bit distracting whenever I'd see my chest from the side or anything like that, but because they were like a very prominent little bump. So again, I'm not sure if that was intentional, but I did find that that was a little bit distracting to me. There's a little bit of a ruching going on in the front as well. You definitely see a lot of ruching in some of these bras in this collection so if you guys don't love that 
You guys are probably going to want to skip on these bras, but if you guys do love that, I love that we're seeing it in a good handful of different version of bras versus just a select few. I feel like we've only really seen the ruching in the bloom bra the most, and so it's definitely different to see it in a few more in this collection here. Even looking at the model wearing the halter seamless, I find that the cup just looks a little bit too small. Like I just feel like we needed just a little bit more for it to look a bit more, I don't want to say proportional, but like just to give it a little bit more coverage. Like not even like, like regardless of your cup size, I just feel like it's just a missing a little bit more surface area. I will say overall, this halter seamless was a lot more comfortable to wear than the one from the Sevens collection. Literally cannot remember the name to save my life. I want to say it's sultry, but I could be very wrong. I will confirm on the screen. But the main reason why I found that this one was more comfortable was for obvious reasons and it being the seamless fabric all the way through. Where the one from the Sevens collection, the um, strap right here around the neck was actually of that ribbon fabric and it was just so uncomfortable to wear for any period of time. And so this one does not have the ribbon material on the neck part. It is actually the seamless fabric all the way through. It's only that center strap that is made of that ribbon material. So I found that that made it a lot more comfortable to wear, um, considering that it is a halter and that tension that you get from a halter top. And so that is probably the biggest difference that I found comparing the two, given that they were very similar in style. I mean, they are, but they aren't, you know what I mean? Like the style itself is very different. Like I said, like the way that the cups come up and everything like that. I will say I like the cup design more on the one from the Sevens collection as I don't love the ruching. And as I've already complained about, I feel like the cup coverage was just a little bit too short. And so I wish that we saw a little bit more, or I don't want to say I wish we saw it, but I hope that we see that halter design kind of come to life, but without the ribbon and maybe with this whole seamless situation, since this seems to be the most comfortable in a halter style bra. I did go ahead and sizing up to an extra large for this one, only because again, I wanted to make sure that I got as much cup coverage as possible in the bra and I'm really glad that I did go ahead with an extra large. I didn't feel like it was too loose or anything anywhere even though I am typically a true size large bra. I felt that the extra large was just fine given the support that the seamless fabric gives you. Last sports bra is one of the OG bras of Buff Bunny collection and if you know you know but the Catalina bra we have not seen her in so freaking long and the first time we saw her was literally like five years ago back when we had a marble collection drop and it had like that blue color in there as well i literally still have my catalina bras till this day and it is just amazing to see an old piece come back to life i'm always it's just like pure nostalgia when you see some of these old old pieces come back but like new and improved and i just i love it so much and the fact that i have been through that and now I get to see like the new version. It's just so fun and it's just such a cool way to see how much the brand has grown and evolved over time. And so we do have the Catalina bra coming out specifically for the jacquard fabric and that is the bossy jacquard that we talked about earlier being the Rosa jacquard leggings. And so there are improvements to the Catalina bra and the biggest one is going to be that adjustable clasp. I wouldn't say adjustable actually, it's more that it is a clasp situation where we did not see that in the Catalina bra originally. I do find that makes it a lot easier to get the bra on and off. Out, however, it isn't adjustable by any means. Like there's not any different levels or anything. It's just the one, but it does make it again, a lot more comfortable to put the bra on and off. Something else that I noticed is that I can adjust the straps in regards to its placement. So if I want it a little bit wider, if I want it a little bit more narrow. And so that is nice to adjust that based on how you want it to sit on your traps. And so overall, we love the Catalina bra. I think it's just such a beautiful bra to have an open back concept, but again, have that higher neck in the front. So so again, another great option for the bigger titty committee if you guys are looking for that open back situation, but you guys want to have no clavage in the front, this will be a great option for you if you guys do like the jacquard, of course. But again, I just love that we see some adjustments happening in such an OG design and I hope that we see this Catalina bra come back potentially in new brie and potentially in some new colors, of, of course. 
because I do think that this bra alone has, is just such a unique bra, um, but I just don't think that the jacquard is going to be for everybody. Now, I'm not sure if it was due to the jacquard or if it's just due to the Catalina bra's new design, but I did find she was a little bit snug, a little bit tight, and so I probably would have sized up from the size that I have here. Now, the only problem with me sizing up, and I did experience this in the OG Catalina bras, is that when I did size up, I did get more comfortability overall, but I did find that I had a little bit of looseness happening in the waistband as well as a little bit of gapping happening up here but again that's just something that I always have to pick and choose sometimes when it comes to accommodating certain issues that I'm having with certain tops or bottoms when it comes to adjusting my sizing that way. Now moving on to the tops I definitely love this one and that is the long sleeve butter crop. We definitely all loved the t-shirt butter crop situations when those came out, but the fact that they did a long sleeve, we love her even more. They do have thumb holes and this one does have a shelf liner in it. The t-shirt one, we don't have an actual shelf in it. It was just that it had extra lining to insert the cup pads where this one has an actual shelf bra. You guys know me, sometimes I like the shelf bras, sometimes I absolutely cannot fucking stand them. This one I found was just fine. I didn't find it uncomfortable by any means or anything like that. I did go ahead with a size medium. I could have gone up with a large if I wanted it to be just a little less fitting, but honestly, for my tops, I like them to be as fitting as they can be while still being comfortable, especially if they have a shelf bra in them. And I did find that the medium was just fine considering how long I was wearing it for and given that the support it gave me and everything like that. Overall, this long sleeve is just so beautiful. There's literally nothing bad things to say about it. It just looks so, so good on every single person. The neckline is just so flattering. The butter material, as I've said many times before, is just so comfortable. And I'll definitely be picking it up in a black color as well. She is in a cropped length, so hopefully we do eventually maybe see her in a fuller length. I know she was supposed to come in two lengths, but for whatever reason, she is only coming out in one. So hopefully maybe in the future, we will be seeing two different lengths. Again, I do think that this is such a great thing to start seeing with Bofani Collection is that we're also doing different lengths in tops, bras, and pants, not just pants. And so I think this is going to be something that we're going to be seeing more and more with Bofani Collection. So hopefully while she didn't make it this time around, we do see her in the future just to accommodate those who might not want a crop top all the time. One thing I will say is that the boot pads in this white one were not it whatsoever. I instead will be wearing my little stickies inside and taking out those boot pads because it was just so bad in the white one. Like I get that it's hard to do with white, but those ones were just not it for me. So I had to remove those right away because it's just not cute. Speaking of different lengths, this is something that you can expect to see in this new Karma crop tank top. I think this was so genius of them to do two different lengths, especially because again, some people like the crop, but some people feel like the crop is definitely almost more like a bra, especially if you have a longer torso. Or for me, I find it perfect, but I find for the longer torso ladies that sometimes the crop length is just a little too short. So I think it's a really fun thing that we're going to be seeing two different lengths in the Karma crop top. And I'm really excited to see what the longer torso girlies have to say about this. And you guys can expect to see about a three inch difference between the two. I would say that is a quite significant difference in material between the two. And so again, very excited to hear how the longer torso girlies feel about this. And hopefully my longer torso girlies who are watching this are excited about that as well. I definitely found that this Karma crop was very similar to the Covet crop. However, there are obviously some differences in comparing the two. I do have a lot of comparisons of the two in the free PDF that you guys can download in the description below. This one does have a different back detailing as well. This one actually has a ballet inspired back and it, overall it is a beautiful design for the back of a tank top. This crop also does have a shelf liner. Again, I didn't feel like it was uncomfortable by any means and I was very happy with my size medium. Very similar to what I just mentioned with the long sleeve, I definitely could size up to a large if I wanted to have just a little bit more forgiveness in the shelf liner, but I did find that I was just fine in the medium. I feel like a lot of people will definitely be excited to see somewhat of a full length tank top in this collection because I feel like it's been a minute. So if you guys are looking for something a little bit more fuller length, then the regular length will be a length that you guys will be opting in for, for sure. Last top in this collection is going to be the No Filter Tee, which is our usual 100% cotton pump cover-esque style t-shirt. 
Unfortunately, this is not going to make it for any PR, but you guys can see a picture here of what that t-shirt is going to look like. And again, she is your traditional 100% cotton t-shirt. So just very much depending on the style of a t-shirt you're looking for would depend on what size you get. As you guys know, I love my medium, large, extra large situation, depending on how oversized I want my t-shirt to be. All right, I feel like this one is a hot topic and you guys know it is that time where dresses are rolling out in collections and so we have a new bend and snap dress in this collection and I have to say she's probably one of the more flattering like fit and flare dresses that we've seen in a minute when you compare to all of the previous ones that we've seen, she is definitely my favorite. And I think it has to do a lot with the top. I honestly would say like this would be such a cute like tank top as well. Something about though the design in like the neckline and just the seams that you're seeing is just so much more flattering. And even just the way that it connects then to the skirt portion, I think just looks so much better than again, the ones that we've seen previously. And it just gives it a little bit more extra and just looks a lot more fashion forward, I guess you could say, but still being an active wear dress. So I think they did a really good design in the overall design of this dress. Again, leaning into accommodating more body types and accommodating more preferences. They are gonna be doing two different lengths in this dress. We have a short one as well as a regular one. And I can confirm that, especially for those who find that the previous dresses were just a little bit too short, especially if you have bigger glutes, the regular length is going to help that significantly. Teresa did confirm this because I do know that she did struggle a lot with the other dresses being a little bit too short for her glutes and she did say that the regular helped immensely in this and so again very excited to see that we are adding in different lengths to accommodate different preferences different bodies in so many of the pieces coming out in this collection. This is made of their Perform fabric. So again, very much an active wear dress, but also can be a fashion dress as well. She does have shorts underneath. I will say that these shorts are not super compressive by any means, but they're also not super loose or thin. Like we've seen in previous ones, I feel like they're just right. They're very much similar to all of the other dresses that we've seen in the past. So if you guys have any of those, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. They're not super compressive like you would expect in some of the other short liners that we've seen, but they're also not not like a thin liner either. They're like a very much like a short, just not too compressive. I didn't find that they were rolling up or anything like that too annoyingly or anything as I was wearing the dress. They just move very comfortably underneath there where you are going to have to adjust it a little bit since they aren't super compressive. I've said this many times before, but I do feel like these shorts that are under skirts should be just a little bit more compressive so that she doesn't move a lot, but maybe there's a reasoning for it not being too compressive so that it's just a little bit more comfortable to move with you as you move around in this dress. You do also have some of those side pockets happening in those shorts as well, as we've previously seen in all these dresses that do have those built-in shorts underneath. Again, to confirm, they're not a short liner. They very much are like a, you know, spandex short underneath, but they're just not nearly as compressive as a typical spandex short that would be on its own. So I guess it's kind of like a hybrid of being shorts and also a liner because it doesn't have that same compression that spandex shorts would typically give you. I also love that we had fully adjustable shoulder straps. I think this made a significant difference in it being able to fit on my body comfortably, given what is important for me in regards to comfortability. And again, I find that the seams are very complementary to the silhouette of our body. Now, the only problem that I really had with this dress is that I found that I was actually getting a lot of gapping up here, like in the cups. And no matter how tight I adjusted my straps, it was always just gapping. And so I don't necessarily feel like I wanted to size down into a small, just because sometimes I do do that in the dresses, the one pieces, in order for it to accommodate certain parts of my body. But I feel like for this dress specifically, I really did like how the medium fit for me. And so that gapping is just something that I found was a little bit annoying and I did find that other people did experience that as well. And so I'm not sure if that's just something that needs to be adjusted in the design itself because like I said, in adjusting the straps alone, it didn't really take that away. So just something to keep in mind that even for someone like me who does have quite a bit of fullness in her cups, I was experiencing quite a bit of gapping in the dress itself. It wasn't anything excessive where like it, I would be really annoying to wear the dress, but it was something that I noticed right away. All right, last clothing piece, and then we'll move on to some really exciting accessories, is the Wildest Dream set. Now, unfortunately, 
I also don't have this, nor have I heard too much about it. So I am gonna continue to reach out and see if I can get more insight on this crop top and short set. And I will report back and leave everything on the screen. All right, last but not least, we have the accessories. I am going to speed through the butter scrunchies because I really, really need to get to the totes but we will be seeing some butter scrunchies. You know a collection isn't a collection without some matching scrunchies. So if you guys are looking for a matchy matchy moment or if you guys are actually gonna use them as a scrunchie, you guys can expect a few colors of those in this collection. And moving on to the probably, I would say, stars of this collection. You know, next to some pieces, I would say the totes are the stars because we have not seen a game changer tote bag in so long i know so many of you guys have literally even the og tote bag you guys didn't even get the like newer version that was like a little bit more structured you guys have the og one and so the fact that they are coming back in this collection and they also have a mini version coming out is a huge huge deal if you guys want a comparison between the game changer totes you guys can watch that video over here now while this one does have a few changes in regards to the metal hardware as well as the leather the dimensions are the exact same so when it comes to the review that i made a while ago in comparing how much you can fit in there all of those things will continue to be the same. Again, the biggest differences is the different pebbled leather that we're seeing, as well as the hardware being a tone on tone. Overall, I feel like the weight isn't quite the same in these new ones. I feel like it's just a little bit lighter. And then also too, you no longer get the satin duster bag. You now get the cotton bag that we have been seeing with the belt bag. So no more satin, silk, dust bags and more of the cotton ones, which is too bad because I actually enjoy the satin ones a lot more, but they did change them to be the cotton ones now. Some other changes that are worth noting is that the logo is now embossed into the tote as well. And then we also have a different stitch detailing on the handle. Overall, I love it. It's still the amazing tote that everyone loves. I said that there are a few changes made. As I mentioned with the bras earlier, I am just a sucker for the matching tone hardware so i do love that a lot and so it's just a new elevated version of the game changer tote that literally changed the game from day one you'd be surprised how much you can fit in these totes but it's definitely a dangerous game because you can definitely fit almost too much where it's just way too heavy for your shoulder so just be careful of that in the free pdf there are a few more close-ups of differences between the og Game Changer Tote, the updated Game Changer Tote that was a little bit more structured, and then this Game Changer Tote. So you guys can check all those photos out in the free PDF link below. The last but not least piece in this collection is the mini Game Changer Tote. I love her so, so much. And when I saw that she was coming out, I literally was like, oh my gosh, yes, because sometimes you just don't need that big of a tote. Sometimes you aren't feeling like a backpack, and sometimes... Something as cute and dainty as this Game Changer mini tote is just absolute perfection. And especially the fact that it comes with this long strap and that it still fits the large iPhone and the iPhone holder in the front. We just love her so much. There are a few things that are different between the mini Game Changer tote bag and the original, I guess you could say, size tote bag. And one of the main ones that I noticed was that the leather is different, so it's not as pebbled. You also have a different logo, which is very much a little bit more prominent. It's not embossed, it's actual like hardware. It is still tone on tone, which is nice. And then I find that the zipper is a little bit different as well. It's a little bit chunkier of a zipper than the other tote bag. I can confirm that the leather is still vegan leather. It's just that it is smooth. So again, not seeing as much of that pebble detailing up close as you would see on the other tote bag and in previous pebbled leathers. She will be coming out in black as well as bone. I personally love the bone so, so much. And again, I love that it also comes with a full body strap that is, of course, adjustable as well. And in the next coming clips, I'm going to show you guys exactly how much you can fit in this cute ass mini game changer tote. Overall, I think she is a perfect functional mini size. I know that sometimes mini bags can be not so functional, but I do feel like this size is definitely very much a purse that you can use for many different things and fit quite a bit. So I wouldn't say she's like 
mini, 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 like the mini game changer backpack. She is quite mini where I find that this tote is definitely a little bit bigger than that. So you do fit a little bit more. I mean, even in the mini game changer backpack, which I know we're all waiting to be restocked at some point, you know, both of them definitely fit quite a bit, but I find that the tote bag, you're definitely going to fit a little bit more given that she is just a little bit bigger. Now, when it comes to where you're going to use her, I think that's totally up to you. You could definitely use her as just a fashion piece, but you could use her at the gym if you'd like as well. Definitely going to be up to you, but she is a very nice vegan leather. So I just be a little careful with her for sure. But I am so excited to hear how many of you guys are excited about this mini game changer tote or if you're like, absolutely not. All right, you guys, that is everything for the No Filter Collaboration Collection with Buff Bunny Collection and Katherine Mueller. Huge, huge congratulations, Katherine. I am so, so happy for you. This was definitely very much you. I definitely saw a lot of things in this collection that were very important to you being someone who definitely watches your reviews as well and definitely, you know, in the conversations that we've been able to have in exchanging our thoughts on certain collections and pieces, I saw a lot of amazing features that you had adjusted to some of these pieces. So again, huge congratulations and amazing work to you and the Buff Bunny Collection design team. And I can't wait for the rest of the world to get their hands on your beautiful collaboration. And again, I think the Swifties need to tell me some of the references in the collection pieces or the color pieces that I'm just not quite getting. I feel like there's definitely some that I'm just not acknowledging. Again, because I'm not a Swifty, I just definitely have no idea. But I also know that there's some references to Catherine's ballet career. So I don't know. I definitely think that someone's going to have to piece those pieces of information together for me because your girl is just like not there. As always, if you guys enjoyed this video and if you guys found this helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And let me know if you will be shopping this collection as well. Very curious as to what everyone is feeling, given just like a whole new vibe from what we've seen in the previous collections. I'm really excited to see what is coming up for this spring and summer at Buff Bunny Collection. You know, we could definitely expect to see, I'm sure, prints, some colors, some more new pieces. It's just going to be really fun to kind of get into that next season of the year. If you guys do end up choosing to support your girl by using the code GABS at checkout, Make sure to let me know by sending me a DM over on Instagram, letting me know on Discord, wherever you want to let me know. I always love to know when you guys choose to and put the time and effort to support me and my family for everything that we do for these collections, or if you just like to support me and the family in general. So yeah, definitely make sure to let me know so I can say thank you. And I can't wait to see you guys all in your no filter goodies. And last but not least, if you guys want a chance to win a Buff Bunny Collection gift card, I do have a giveaway happening over on Instagram. That you guys can go ahead and enter to win. And comment below what you guys are most excited about for this collection. With that being said, that is everything. Thank you guys so much. Love you all. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.